Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Triple Play, that podcast where we wear the same patchwork shorts for several years. Because this month we watched Kung Fu Panda 1, 2, and 3. Written by Jonathan Abel and Glenn Berger. <laughs> Directed by John Stevenson, Mark Osborne, Jennifer U. Nelson, and Alessandro Carloni. And produced by Melissa Cobb. And released in 2008, 2011, and 2016. So now these are the the newest movies we watched, or the third one is the newest movie we've watched. Yeah, because it just came out a couple months ago. Well, <laughs> this episode will have gone out a year oh. after the movie. Will oh yeah, go out. all right. Well, <laughs> whatever. You get what I mean? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I do. <laughs> I don't know if they know, but but I guess they do now. So. Normally we start with how many times we've seen these movies, so... I... But this time we're taking a radical different turn. Nope. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, I've Zero. seen the first one. <laughs> we shouldn't have said that at the same time. All right, we'll go on three. One, two, three. Uh, who's, Zero. Who, who's going on three? <laughs> I've seen Zero. the first one. Oh my god! <laughs> <sighs> well, whatever. Zero. No one just... <laughs> Zero. Right? Yeah, zero for me. I've seen the first one uh, once, maybe twice. No, pretty sure it was just once. So yeah, these are pretty much our first times watching these. Yeah, thank God we chose movies that are only an hour and a half long each <laughs> for our first animated trilogy. Well, I mean, we were gonna do something else. In, in, in this slot. slot, but then it was too long, so <laughs> we just switched to this. <laughs> well, because there's no movies coming out in a franchise we can capitalize on in January of 2017. So it's basically our month to choose whatever, just like two months ago when we did Never Ending Story. <clears throat> well, yeah, we ended up doing this, so... <laughs> Well, I was I was skeptical at first, but I came away from these actually enjoying them. So you were skeptical at first. Yeah. Interest. I mean, not interesting. That's like most people would be. Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was just gonna be like some crappy, like little panda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess maybe a little better than that. Actually, maybe a lot better than that. If you don't know, Little Panda Fighter is a crappy knockoff of kung fu panda which was made to capitalize on kung fu panda yeah it came out like a couple months after kung fu panda <laughs> you could tell it was made in a couple months <laughs> so production time it's gonna be weird because it's an animated film yeah can't believe the first animated trilogy we're watching is kung fu panda but that's okay because like i don't know these were pretty pretty good so I was going to say, we're saving Toy Story for when Toy Story 4 comes out, so... Yeah, Toy Story is just... And Cars 3 right. isn't out yet. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to watch Shrek, because, well, one, it has four movies, and two, just no. It's Shrek. It's two, Shrek. it's Shrek. Well, we're going to have to watch it eventually. <clears throat> A long time from now. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> And then DreamWorks. We oh, could have oh. done Madagascar. I think we considered doing Madagascar, but we're like, Kung Fu Panda's better than Madagascar, so we did Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. <clears throat> Thing is, I, I questioned, like, right when we started watching these movies, I was like, man, why does every DreamWorks movie have such a bad art style? But, like, after watching <laughs> these three, and especially the third one, the, the designs kind of grew on me. Well, because they got better throughout the films. They did more research for the second one than they... Well, design-wise for the second one than the first. The third one, they got all new age. No. <laughs> <laughs> new age animation. Uh, anyway, yeah, we should probably just dive into how they made these. And why. Well, the first one apparently was supposed to be a parody at first. Yeah, and that seems like a pretty bad idea, so... Yeah, Glad the, they changed it. The uh, director, John Stevenson, was like, yeah, let's not make it a parody. That's like a life shelf life of 10 minutes. No one's going to buy parody. Um, so they set out to make 
an actual <laughs> an actual good kung, kung fu, fu movie. film. Uh, yeah, someone made this comment. It's probably the director about how he wanted to solidify his place in the canon. Yeah, that was the director. And I'm like, yeah, all right, but I, mean, I guess it worked out since these movies are like beloved in China and like considered really good martial arts movies. Yeah. Which is nice, because, like, I don't know, one of their ideas for this was, obviously, it's animated, so, you you know, and they're animals, so you can do a lot more with the the martial arts action type stuff. Yeah. So they they definitely took advantage of that. Apparently, they considered having, like, a a Hollywood fight coordinator come in and coordinate other fights with them. They're like, they're animals. Doesn't really matter what they do. As long as we make it look legitimate, it'll be good. Should have gotten Keanu. <laughs> well, I considered just using Jackie Chan because he was voicing the monkey. But they're yeah. like, nah, these people usually work in live action. Like, some things in live action don't translate exactly to animation. Also, they're animals, so... Yes, I mean, they're animals and they're animated animals, so you can do a lot of cool stuff. With those animated animals. Yeah, so... I think um, I read... I don't know much about Kung Fu, but... Wow, the, no, I'm just the kidding. The Furious Five were uh, chosen based on like the original five uh, forms of Kung Fu, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> monkey style, yeah. Monkey Sorry. style. So... Tiger. That was interesting. Crane. I didn't know that. Mantis. Obviously, Mantis is the most OP of all the characters. Yeah, I would choose Mantis style. <laughs> um, the movie took... Crane. Crane was like a running joke while we were watching these movies because he just got beat up so much. My and wing! Like, it looked like his legs were broken for like half of the first and second movie. Just felt bad for Crane having to carry Poe. Yeah. <laughs> like, most of the movies, like, why do I have to carry like, the panda? He's like, Crane, you're going to go on a journey. Is it because I can fly? Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, that wasn't how that actually played out, but... It was similar enough to how it actually played out, though, so anyway, that's yeah. all that matters. <clears throat> so, so, yeah, they went down that not-parody route, thankfully. Yeah, well, the first movie took four years to make, so... And they spent... Apparently, the designers spent between them eight years researching Chinese architecture and design just for this film. So they put a yeah, lot of I guess time and effort off. into it. It paid off in the town scene, I guess, although the second one had more cool architecture and stuff. And I remember making this comment at the end of the first one, like, wow, it looks kind of Spanish. <laughs> like, I don't know. Well, the second one, they... I don't know jack about anything so for the second one i guess we'll just talk about this now the the whole like production team actually flew to the real life city of changdu it's called yeah well i mean the movie it's called something else it's called like gong so i don't know something like that but they flew out there just to get a feel for what it's like (laughs) and they hoped they would get to see real pandas because they like worked off google images for the first film yeah yeah Uh, they hadn't actually seen any pandas which, I mean, makes sense, because, like, living in the U.S., like, you're not really going to get many chances to see a panda. Probably not even living in China, because, like, most people probably live in the cities, I, I assume, but... Also, pa- aren't pandas, like, going extinct? Yeah. Because um, they're, like, they're not reproducing with each other or something like that? Yeah, I think that's pandas. Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> not certain, but, yeah, I think that's pandas. Um... Seem to be doing fine in the hidden village. <laughs> yeah, because all they did was eat. I mean, that's yeah, where did they... pretty much all they do in real life, too, but anyway. Yeah, except they're deforesting all the bamboo. In the movie, they eat noodles. <laughs> noodles and dumplings. Yeah. <laughs> like that Chinese article we read that had like a whole paragraph just about yeah. what noodles appeared in the film. Yeah, okay, so Poe's dad owns a noodle shop, and like we both read this one article... It was written in Chinese. It was from a Chinese website, and they had a like a shoddy English translation on the bottom, which I'm, I'm not giving them crap for that. You know, whatever is pretty good yeah. translation. But there was like an entire paragraph about how foreigners can't appreciate all the food that Poe's dad makes. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Yeah, maybe we can't. But at the I, same I mean, time, <laughs> I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> wow, brutal. <clears throat> uh, so... What else? Uh, so the honestly, you know what? 
the the noodles in the movie just looked like they were instant cup noodles put into a bowl. Well, they did in the first movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got a little better. And they had just, like, one lame slice of radish in each bowl. Like, come on. Yeah, but at the end of the first film, he was like, I'm going to make my noodles without vegetables. <laughs> or was that the end of, like, the third one when he's telling the story of... Oh, shit, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> he was telling Paul the story of how he was found in a radish bin. Yeah, honestly, his dad was kind of annoying in the third one. <laughs> Not going to lie. Like, Junior! <laughs> Except way yeah. less annoying than Junior. Yeah, like a hundred times less annoying. Still pretty annoying though, so I mean that just gives you a hint about Junior there. <laughs> Probably the most annoying movie character of all time. <laughs> anyway. Um Yeah, so they were working on the animation and obviously at the same time, or like later into working on that casting. Well, they actually, okay, so I read this really interesting interview with the director of the first film where he explained, like, how they put the whole thing together. And he said was, so they start with just storyboards, and then they just have, like, people on the production crew record the lines, just so they have, like, a skeleton of what the movie's going to look like. And then concurrently with that, uh, the casting department, like, looks for the actors that they want. And then so what they do is they take the storyboards and they, like, they map out scene by scene they do it one scene at a time and they'll like animate that scene and then they'll get in the voice actors and they'll like voice the voice over the scene and then they'll be like, okay, so we got one scene done. They animated the scenes first. Yeah. Apparently. That's weird. That's what the director was saying. They animated the film. Well, they animated the scenes using the placeholder voiceover and then they would get in the, like the, the actual actors. Mm, Okay. That's kind of weird. Um, and then they would like do the whole film like that, and then they would they would get a finished product like four years down the line. Usually they um, record the voices first, so that's a bit strange. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if that's actually true because the direct. Well, one of the, the interviewer asked like, "I've heard before that you record the voices before you do the animation," and the director was like, "No, no, at DreamWorks we've always done it this way. We've always like animated it with the placeholder voices and then added in the actual hmm. voiceover later." Well, that's interesting. <clears throat> Most movies i don't know about like tv animated tv shows but most movies would record the voices first yeah well yeah that's i mean that's what i had assumed they had done until i read this article yeah. i guess they don't John's, do that in DreamWorks. john stevenson was like no 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 <laughs> we do them concurrently anyway apparently that uh, all the actors they got for the main characters for this film were exactly who they wanted so <laughs> There was, like, no ultimate <laughs> casting for, this, for the first film, at least. They just they called up these people, and they're like, yeah, we'll do it. So. Yeah, I, I read that originally Poe's character was more of a jerk, and then, like, Jack Black came in and recorded some lines and, like, sort of altered the character and made him less of a jerk, which was nice. So, you know, you yeah, don't want Poe to be like, a jerk. Well, like, because everyone else was a jerk in the first <laughs> film, so... <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, Tigress. I mean, Tigress is probably my favorite character, and she was, like... Yeah, probably the biggest jerk. Uguay is the best character. Yeah, Uguay was up there. <laughs> um, yeah, the writers were just like, oh yeah, we had these voices in mind. We like passed it onto the casting department. And they just called them up and they said, yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it doesn't take that long to record your lines for an hour and a half movie, especially since most of the, since, like the only people who talk that much are Poe and Shifu. Yeah, well, I imagine it would take a couple days. John Stevenson also said that like Jack Black would do like six takes for every single scene in the movie <clears throat> because he would do like one or two warming up takes and he'd do three or four where he would like try to get the character down then five or s- the takes five or six would be the ones where he like actually did it for the movie so i imagine it would take a couple of days if you're doing yeah, six t- I mean, six takes per scene a couple of days like that's better than you know a couple of weeks for an, like any other movie that's any true. other live action movie i mean not like animated. yeah yeah and uh yeah, I didn't know this either, but, like, um, for the second film, at least, uh, Jennifer Yu, like, sat in the recording booth with the actors to, like, direct them. I'd always assumed the director, like, listened to the lines after they recorded and then gave them notes, but apparently Jennifer just just sat in the studio and was, like, giving them notes live, so... No, sometimes the director will sit in there. And sometimes they have a voice director for animated crap, so... <laughs> Well, apparently at DreamWorks, they have this position called head of story, which is like apparently 
almost like an assistant director position. They just fetch the coffee. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, apparently the head of story is like actually the highest position on the movie except for the director. Like John Stevenson, and apparently head of story is like the stepping stone before you become a director at DreamWorks. So John Stevenson was head of story for um, a film called Tusker, which never got made at DreamWorks. They never ended up finishing it. It got scrapped. And then Jennifer U. Nelson, director of the second and third, was head of story on the first Kung Fu Panda. <clears throat> but apparently if you're head of story, you're like coordinating all the scenes and making sure all the animation like fits up to the plot of the film and making sure that all the lines are getting recorded so oh sweet i'll do that for the next one (laughs) kung fu panda 4 watch the next one's gonna have a subtitle well they were gonna have a subtitle for the second one and they just scrapped it pandemonium yeah they they changed it to the kaboom of doom yeah which is more lame because it's not kaboom it's skadoosh I thought the Kaboom of Doom was referring to the cannons in the second one. Well, yeah, I guess, but it sounds a lot more lame than but kaboom, Skadoosh. Kaboom! <laughs> Ka-chow! <laughs> um, so yeah, they casted it. Easy they finished peasy. It. Uh, a lot of, came out, a lot of people really liked the animation. Although I guess I'm looking at it through 2016 eyes, because I'm like, yeah, the animation's just okay. Well, I mean... In like recent years, the animation quality has been like steadily increasing. So yeah, honestly, I'm just gonna come out and say that the third one looked like way better than any Disney or Pixar movie. I don't. I wouldn't say it's any better than Pixar films. I'd say there's a couple Pixar films that would look better. I mean, the majority of them, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's better than the newest ones, and like the art direction is way better too. Well, it's cool, experimental colors at the end. <laughs> But maybe that's because they opened up a new studio in to help China. Make it. Posh, we'll, yeah, yeah we'll, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. So the first one was like big success, I guess. So they yeah, I mean, made a second. It, it was one. one of their biggest successes, which is well deserved because it was a pretty, pretty good movie. It was like up there with Shrek. <laughs> Shrek came out like a. Uh, Shrek came out a couple years before the first one, I think. Shrek came out in two thousand one. Yeah, a couple years. Seven years Seven is a years. couple years. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if you consider all of time. Yeah, I yep. do. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yes, no, so, yeah, so do I. Uh, so, <laughs> apparently, uh, what's his name? Katzenberg, CEO of DreamWorks at the time. I don't know if he's still CEO or not. Um, he was like the John Lasseter of DreamWorks. Lasseter. I uh, went to the writer's... Jonathan Abel and Glenn Bergen were like, hey, can you, like, plot out a six-film arc for Poe? And they're like, uh... Nope. Sure. <laughs> so they plotted out this whole six-film arc, but they've only made three. I don't know. They haven't announced a fourth one yet, but I think that whole six-film thing is still on the table, at least. Yeah, well, I think they just sort of agreed to do six, like, not contractually, and then, like, I don't know if they've, like... Store, not storyboard, but like plotted out six movies. I'm sure. I'm sure they have ideas, but well, they said they plotted out like the whole journey and probably in their heads. <clears throat> no, I'm pretty sure on paper because they also they said this is before this is like before the second film came out. They said their plan was to have it end with Poe becoming like an Uguay like character. So I guess they like adapted those six films into the three that they ended up making. Because at the end of the third one, Poe is basically Uguay now. Well, I mean, yeah, the third stuff. one. The third one wraps up. Poe and like all the other characters pretty nicely so what would be kind of cool is if they had like a new protagonist and the next three are set like 50 years later or something yeah that would be kind of interesting just based on their comments i'm assuming though they took the original six film plan that they made before the second film and compressed it into the three films that ended up getting made <clears throat> mainly because there's like nowhere else they can go now with poe at least after the third film i don't know like what what he would fight now <laughs> yeah honestly i would say that you know planning out or Having a idea for a six-part movie series is sort of, you know, biting off more than you can chew, maybe. But, I mean, as long as they have, I don't know, like, an interest... Like, the villains were kind of one of the best parts of, th- of these movies, so as long as yeah. they have, like, a, an interesting villain and, like, a kind of self-contained plot, which all of them did, mm-hmm. then I think it could work out. Well, I don't think it's too weird for... DreamWorks specifically, because they've always gotten a lot of flack, whether deserved or not, for making a lot of sequels for their films. So I think they were just already looking ahead, like, hey, we might want to make some sequels, so, like, can you plan them out already? <clears throat> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, 
since the second one was like pretty much as good as the first one or maybe better and the third one was like also pretty good the second you know? one's better if you listen to amazon reviews <laughs> <clears throat> just saying like they could have a six part series where all of them are good which is like not typical of anything it's not tip- yeah i don't think anything any movie series has had six parts that like well maybe harry potter the first six movies were better than this two-part seventh movie. <clears throat> um, yeah. Like anyway. the second one? That one was pretty good. <laughs> uh, well, they got I'm the same They got the same fan. writers for... You're a Harry Potter fan? No, I'm not a big okay. Harry Potter fan. They got the same writers for all three Kung Fu Panda movies, so that was... Uh, they got pretty much the same production style for all three, which I think is a smart move if you're trying to make them all, like, at least the, the same... <laughs> well, the same quality as the other ones. Maybe not the same quality, but the same <laughs> as the other ones. You know, not too noticeably different. Yeah. <laughs> or well, the same characterization, I guess you could say. Maybe. I don't know. To an extent, yeah. Anyway, yeah, the second one comes around and they're like, let's go to China. <laughs> let's fly to China. Let's walk. No. <laughs> yeah, walk to China from uh, from the US. Just cross the ocean. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Just trek on over to the Bering Strait and swim to Russia and walk. Walk through Russia to China? Yeah. Wouldn't... If you're going from the U.S. to China, wouldn't it be quicker to, like, go the other way? Just to go west? Just, like, go up to Alaska and then just, like, sail across that little strait and then just walk That's down into exactly China? exactly what I said. Oh, okay. For some reason, I thought the Bering Strait was on the east. <clears throat> um, yeah, so they flew to, to Chengdu. They got some more design inspiration, I guess. Yeah, for the, for the city. When it, it kind of showed, you know, they had all those cool pagoda things and, like, the intricate city chase scenes, which they did have in the first one, too. But, yeah. I don't know, the this first one was in the village and, like, the second one was sort of, like, a big city or something, so, I don't know. Well, they also made the villain a peacock, not a crane, as I kept calling him <laughs> when we were watching the movie for some okay. bizarre reason. Yeah, his name was Shen. I thought <clears throat> he was female at first. Um... <laughs> Yeah, but he wasn't. He's so. not. He's voiced by Gary Oldman, so... His, his character is, like, literally the same exact character as Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Down to the part where he sounds like a woman, but is actually male. <laughs> he sa- he didn't sound like a woman to me. He sounded like a man. Like an old British dude, which is what Gary Oldman is, so... <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess I'm just hearing some weird stuff here. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um... Shen was like the he made the second movie honestly, yeah. Like he was, I I liked Tai Lung, the villain from the first one. He was a pretty good villain. Like mm-hmm. Shen was also equally as good or better. Yeah, I like Shen more like, than Tai Lung. Not gonna lie, you don't see villains like that in like a kids movie that much. Yeah, I mean he actually had like a decent story in and of himself. He yeah. wasn't there. He wasn't just there to be all evil, which is. True for Tai Long too, but Shen was just like a bit more fleshed out, I think. Yeah, well, Shen had Shen had his whole reason for, well, well, it's not so much a reason for being evil as it was um, circumstances that led him to being evil. Tai Long just like got corrupted by power, which is like pretty standard evil villain stuff. But not bad. No, it's not. I just prefer the Shen. The Shen. He's a companion now. <laughs> I was going to say, like, the Shen style of villain. Um, peacock style, no. <laughs> peacock style. Don't think that's an actual thing. <laughs> but I don't know for certain, so... Um, yeah, well, yeah, and then the second Kai one was, 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 was also a big success. There. <laughs> Kai was voiced by J.K. Simmons, though, so... <clears throat> you know, Kai he, looked like a Viking. <laughs> what was he doing in China? He was coming to conquer China, obviously. He was like, I'm coming to conquer you. And 
do all the other things that Vikings do that we can't mention on a PG rated show. <clears throat> what, like sail ships? No. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, other things that happen when they land on these other continents. <clears throat> so, well, so they like went through this really intensive design process for Kai because they're like, well, I guess we're on the third one now. It's not, do you have anything else to say about the second one? Nope, but it's kind there of a quick go. transition. <clears throat> so, well, apparently they, they, were, they were looking at all the other villains, so Tai Long and oh, Shen. the second one. Yeah, I do have more to say about the second <laughs> all one. All right, actually. going back to the it second was one. The, it is still the highest grossing film directed by a woman, and which well, was overtaken by Frozen, but that was co-directed by a man and a woman. Yeah, so the so, so so this is still it. So it was the highest grossing film directed by only a woman, and yeah, not. and it still is. <clears throat> Doesn't surprise me. The third one probably would have surpassed it, but they're having difficulty meeting deadlines. So Jennifer was like, "Hey, can we add a co-director?" And DreamWorks was like, "Yeah, sure." But the third one hasn't made as much <clears throat> as the second one. That's true. So it wouldn't be up there. Uh, but it'd be on the list. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh, Kai. Kai. So apparently they they like looked at the previous villains, Tai Long and Shen, and were like, "Well, we can't do anyone who just fights because that was Tai Long, and we can't do anyone who's like really intellectual because that was Shen. So we're just gonna go supernatural. Yeah, really intellectual. <clears throat> we're gonna go supernatural. So they went supernatural, and they're like, "Wow, look at this. He comes from the spirit realm. Get a cool power. Okay, the third one looked like amazing, as I mentioned before, like huge jump." Huge jump. Well, it's a five-year jump. Yeah, but still, huge jump. Five years is a long time. Still. Especially in animation terms. And and also, they they did 80 million hours of rendering for the third film. They did 20 million for the first film and 50 million for the second film. So. I have no idea what that means. Okay, well, when you make the anim... I actually have to do this... F- when we make the YouTube videos, when you make a video, you have to render it. So basically the computer has to go, okay, we're going to take all these assets and we're going to like compile it into a video. So when you're making an animated film, you have to render the frames, which is why it actually takes so long to make an animated film is because, so you make, you like design this shot on the computer and then you have to render the shot, which is like takes hours and hours and hours to render like single frames because they have to, because the computer has to calculate like where everyone's going to go and how everyone moves and what it's going to look like and has to generate all the frames individually. So how much they did for a little panda fighter. (laughs) Like 10 hours probably. So they did 80 million hours of rendering for the third film. Yeah, and and, uh, and like we mentioned before, they opened up a whole new studio, which is Oriental DreamWorks. So using sort of an archaic term there for (laughs) some unknown reason well the reasons for opening the studio also seemed a little bit shady be a little bit sh- well <laughs> well de- depending on how you look at it because china has like a, a quota on how many films they can import from the u.s per year like if it's made solely in hollywood it's like falls under the import quota and there's like several other laws preventing yeah. foreign american films move. yeah foreign not just american um but by having Kung Fu Panda 3 be co-made with the studio that they opened in China, they totally just get around the yeah. import laws. Um, Which is cool, and like, I don't know, maybe the... the. I mean, so you could yeah. consider that a little bit shady, or you could consider it smart business sense. Depends how you look at it, I guess. Well, that studio is making their own movie that's coming out like soon. Not 20, soon. 2019, like, I think, the next or 2018. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, that's the thing about animated films is it takes years and years and years to actually make them. Like, live action, they'll be announced four years in advance, but they won't actually, like, start filming it till the year before it comes out. Animated films, they'll announce it four years in (laughs) advance. The week before. We haven't started, guys. (laughs) (laughs) Animated films, they, like, announce it four years in advance, and they've probably already been working on it for two. Um, That's why John Stevenson... In an interview after the first one, was like, yeah, I've been working on this for four years, and it's basically been my life for four years, working, like, weekends to get this done. <clears throat> so. 
Same. No. <laughs> Actually, also, fun fact about Kung Fu Panda 3, because they had the Chinese studio, Oriental DreamWorks, Kung Fu Panda 3 was the first animated film that was also lip synced in Chinese. So they didn't do well, a. I mean, their first, like their Chinese animated movies that are obviously. Well, it's the first English language film that's also lip synced in Chinese. Yeah. <clears throat> But like obviously, there's Chinese animated well, movies yes. that are like made for the Chinese language or the Chinese languages because there's a hundred million of them. What I'm saying, this is the first film that was made in English and then lip synced into Chinese when they've dubbed it over in Chinese instead of just like dubbing yeah, in the Chinese. Dubbing it in Chinese. Um, because these movies that, are huge in China. Yeah, because they had that whole other studio to do that extra rendering, rendering power. <clears throat> So, also, it was yeah. the highest grossing animated film in Vietnam until well, like yeah, some, wow, until, a... <laughs> until something overtook it like recently, <laughs> like something just came out and like overtook it. Wow, that's a really quick turnaround. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <clears throat> I was just gonna say that's a that's a really major fact right there. <laughs> highest grossing animated film in Vietnam. <laughs> that's the kind of thing you see on like. Not saying this is a bad movie, but like when you see a really bad movie, but they try to sell you that it's good, so they put like the highest accolade they've ever received on the poster, and it's like best film ever <laughs> made in Florida suck. or something. <laughs> Three out of five stars. Amazon review. No, <laughs> I saw a movie poster once. It it had all the five star reviews on it, and then there was one two star review for the film. So what they did, because the film was these two people standing next to each other, they put the two star wow, review. Wow, the film was two people standing next to each other. Sounds the, really the boring. Poster. <laughs> so they put the two star review in the middle of the poster, so it looked like the other stars were covered up by the actors' heads. Oh, <laughs> why even put it on then? Just keep it off. They needed more stars. <laughs> I, I guess. They should just total the amount of stars. <laughs> then no one will ever know. 20 star film. <laughs> Based on 20 reviews. <laughs> hmm. So, third one. Also a big success, but they haven't announced a fourth one yet. Yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I, w- I honestly wouldn't be surprised. I think maybe they could do another film with Poe, like maybe contrive some BS for him to do. It wouldn't but I be kind very of hope good, they, though. they do that time skip thing I was talking about before. That might be good. Or just introduce a new character or something. <laughs> if they make another one, they're probably going to kill Shifu off. Let's all just be honest right now. <clears throat> well, yeah, at, at some point. In the fourth, fifth, or sixth one. <laughs> yeah, I think DreamWorks has a lot of other films on the slate coming up right now. They're trying to release two films a year, so yeah, no, DreamWorks no, no, animation no, specifically is like a division between DreamWorks live action and DreamWorks animation. Yeah, none of them seem very interesting. Well, you know, they've got Shrek uh, 5 coming yeah. soon. Yeah. You know, Sh- Sh- and uh, How to Train Your Dragon 3. And, uh... What do all DreamWorks art styles suck? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think... right, maybe I should watch How to Train Your Dragon before I say that, because <clears throat> Kung it's Fu pretty Panda good, grew on me. I haven't seen How to Train Your Dragon, but I've heard it's pretty good. Eh. The Shrek oh, that's style. what Vikings do that we can't mention. They train dragons. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh... <laughs> But I think DreamWorks has this reputation, well, had this reputation when they opened and released Ants. For being uh, like a worse Pixar? Yes. <laughs> I think they still kind of have that reputation. <laughs> but I think they have that reputation less so now because they've released a lot of good original films like Kung Fu Panda and apparently How to Train Your Dragon. So Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to be like the next guy to compare them to Pixar, but... I mean, Kung Fu Panda, the series as a whole, is like better than most Pixar movies. Interesting. Interesting. I wouldn't say it's better than the Toy Story trilogy, though. I would. I wouldn't. I I prefer the Toy Story trilogy. All the way. Animated trilogy fight. Go. (laughs) 
Yeah, John Stevenson, the director of the first one, like was like asked, is there a competition between DreamWorks and Pixar? Or might have been the writers, actually, of the films. Um, and he was like, nah, absolutely not. Nope. Mm-hmm. Sure. Not at all. I was like, yeah, right. The, the two like, biggest it was, it was 3D the CG <laughs> animation studios. It w- sure. It was the writers because... Well, okay, maybe from a writing perspective, maybe not. Yeah. But... I don't, think the, overall, I don't think they're sure. the two biggest anymore. Because like, the Disney has its own animation block now, right? There's like Disney animation. Yeah. And then Warner Brothers has an animation studio now. Well, I mean, Disney now. has been making 3D CG movies for a while. They just weren't any... They just weren't that big. Well, like, they weren't that... Chicken well, Little. Yeah. And uh, there was like something before that. Well, that's because they, they hired John Lasseter to come in. Because they bought Pixar and then they're like, hey, John. Because John was the head of Pixar. Hey, John. John Lasseter was the head of Pixar. He came over and he took over Disney Animation Studios. And Kat- Katzenberg, who is the oh, head of... still take over. Katzenberg, who was the head of DreamWorks, used to be, or still is, friends with like one of the higher-ups of Pixar, but I don't remember which one. And then he like broke off and started his own studio, and that's actually how DreamWorks started. And then he started making Ants, and it came out like right when Bugs Life came out, and everyone was like, that seems a little bit suspicious that you like left Pixar and made this film Ants, like right when Bugs Life came out. Isn't there like some other coincidence like that, too? Yeah, pro- I think, probably I can't somewhere. think of what it is, but it's like, <clears throat> I don't know. I remember watching Ants when I was like four, but I don't remember what I thought of it. <laughs> we have it on VHS, I think. <laughs> And uh, Sony has an animation studio now. Yeah. Which is Illumination Entertainment, I think. They did well, the Despicable I mean, Me films. Yeah, and Ice Age. And Ice Age. God, Ice Age no, wait. is pretty... Ice Age was a different studio to Despicable Me, but the studio that made Despicable Me, I'm pretty sure, is also owned by Sony. <clears throat> Ice Age. We should have done the Ice Age trilogy, because there's, there's like, another Ice Age that came out a couple like months ago. There's like four of them already. I think there's five, to be Yeah, honest. the new one that just came out was like the fifth one or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is, there's a lot of animation studios now. So, I mean, there's always ha- there always has been. Well, there's a lot of like CG animation yeah, now studios. Yeah, there's starting now's... to be more yeah. 3D CG ones as that becomes more of the norm. Yeah, because the mean, norm already is the, the norm. norm was the whole 2D hand drawn style, which yeah, of course, Disney was kind of the king of back when that was a thing. Yeah, no duh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, that pretty much wraps up. How these films were made, I guess. Yeah, so expanded universe stuff. Um, there's a lot. Yeah, As well, you would they had a TV from show. Any, like animated franchise. They have a TV show. A bunch of specials. They have a holiday special. Maybe it's as bad as the Star Wars one. Oh boy, the TV show is on Netflix, but none of the films are. So that was irritating. <clears throat> um, also, Lucy Liu and uh, someone else are the only two act- voice actors from the movies to reprise their roles for the TV show. Lucy Liu plays Viper, who had, like, two lines in the whole trilogy combined. Yeah. <clears throat> they have a Secrets of the Furious Five little special, which goes into their backstory more, which seems interesting. I kind of want to watch that for the point five. Well, we'll figure out what we're doing for the point five later. Um, yeah, like there's, we always do. <laughs> there's a lot more that we probably don't know about. I'm sure there's toys, books things out the door for this franchise yeah well merchandising is like for films like this is like a like huge makes part more of, of movie. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like same thing with cars that's like part of the reason why cars 2 exists merchandising yeah it's part of the reason why the movie exists <clears throat> well the, in, no the first the, no, the, the first, first place no the first cars exists because john Lester loves cars and loves route 66 the second like, one the second one exists because merchandising like every animated like animated kids movie exists because they know there's going to be merchandising yeah but it's, some, yeah, the, the some creative, of the, okay look the creative people have their own ideas and stuff but there's their stuff isn't going to get greenlit if it doesn't have anything to do with toys you can sell the kids i disagree for somewhat. the most part yeah, but like ninety nine. Like, do you really nine, think someone nine, said, nine, "Yeah, nine. Bugs Life will sell a lot yeah. of toys"? Yep. <clears throat> you think you? Yep. You think so? Yep. I don't think so. <clears throat> I think there were a, a lot of animated films actually. With I don't think they thought that was going to sell a lot of merch, like all those other random well, DreamWorks I mean, ones, like Home. Maybe not sell a lot, but like make a profit off of merch. <laughs> merch. <laughs> merch. <clears throat> 
Hmm. I don't think so. Be honest. Got to make a profit off of expanded universe crap. It's got to. It doesn't have to. It can make a profit just in in it can the like theaters. bomb and then you're like, oh shoot, it bombed. If it bombed, it would have to make its money back on merch. But if you make a good film, I think it can succeed mm-hmm. in the in the theater on its own legs. Well, I'm sure they're they're thinking about toys beforehand. <laughs> They're always thinking about the toys beforehand. I don't think for every film, though. I think there are some that are like legitimately just passion projects for the director, and that's why they get made. Like The Incredibles. Like That mm. was Brad Bird's passion project. They didn't make The Incredibles with the, sure the idea knew, that they were selling merch. They knew they were going to sell merch. It's a I mean, superhero thing. They knew they were going to sell merch. They know they're going to sell the merch, but it's not part of the reason why the film gets made, is what I'm saying. I think it is. <clears throat> no. The higher ups at companies and stuff, yeah, definitely. I think you just have a negative view of companies. Like I do, that. but I also think that I'm right. You think you're right for a lot of things. <clears throat> Most people do. <clears throat> yeah, I guess they do. That's why America sucks. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, how do they work as a trilogy? Well. Yeah. Really well, well, actually. They have this whole um, complete journey, I think, for Poe. Yeah. I mean, in the first one, he, like, um, has to, uh, what's it called? Become believe the dragon yeah, warrior. He has to, first, he has to believe in himself. Then he has to not doubt himself anymore. And then he has to just use all these super awesome powers to train his family. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> so kind of a complete thing there <laughs> yeah well when you describe it like that it doesn't sound like a complete thing at all no it kind of does so maybe the third part <laughs> yeah that third part is when it kind of all fell apart <clears throat> yeah well he starts off as a lowly overweight panda and he and ends, he ends as, up as like a really uh, OP uh, overweight yeah, panda as a super powerful overweight panda <laughs> According to Wikipedia, he was obese. That's not true. He was just overweight. It might be true. Okay, so remember how we were talking about whether how we didn't know whether he killed Tai Wong and Shen? Well, according to the, to the wiki, the Kung Fu Panda wiki, he did. Well, so, I, I thought we had just assumed that he did. Yeah, but so. like, we didn't know. But like, according to the wiki, they're dead. Well, I was pretty sure Shen died when you had that <laughs> cannon crush him. Like, that was pretty unambiguous right there. You never know. He could have just... And flatten like a piece of paper. Or like they could they have pulled do. like a dad Ross and just like... Like a Darth Maul and have him Darth come Maul. back. Yeah, but Darth Maul was awesome. I mean, so was Shen, actually. So The fighting scenes with Shen were some of the coolest ones because he's all flying around, his wings open up, and he was chucking <laughs> knives out of his feathers. Yeah, I guess those were just sharpened feathers. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> Whatever. There were actually also some genuinely funny scenes in these movies. Not like, haha, it's movie funny. I know I should be laughing right now. But like scenes that actually make you laugh. Well, it is a comedy. So I was going to say it'd be like kind of a failure if it didn't have well, any funny scenes. A lot of supposed comedies, especially animated movies, are just like, haha, it's not actually funny, but I'm just going to kind of laugh anyway. Yeah, so they fail as comedies. That's what I'm saying. This movie didn't fail as a comedy. Said it was a comedy and it succeeded in being a comedy, I guess. All right. The writers went on this really long discussion in the interview where they were like, some comedy writers just like to do joke, 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 but we don't. We like to make jokes that are in character for the characters. I'm like, isn't that what a good writer would do? <clears throat> also, the Kung Fu Panda movies definitely look like the best movies these writers have ever done. I looked at their like, filmography. And they've done like Alvin and the Chipmunks, the... the the squeak wolf. The squeak wolf. And the third what, one, what? Chipwrecked. Oh, yeah, Chipwrecked. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, the, the Alvin the Chipmunk movies, the real box office juggernaut that challenged Star Wars last year. <laughs> anyway. Alvin? No. <laughs> I watched the first one of those movies. <laughs> I've watched, like, one of the old cartoons or whatever it is. God, the art style in those is just horrible, too. What, the movies or the cartoon? All of them. <laughs> just the whole franchise. <laughs> Jeez. Freaking Alvin. The huge A plastered on his 
shirt. Can you get any more conceited? I thought the the guy who like I, I might be totally wrong, but got the chipmunks like put the A on the shirt so you'd know which one's Alvin because Alvin was the one who kept causing trouble. Well, like you could just see which one was a D bag, and that one would be Alvin, and like the the tall one would be uh, Simon, and like the the one that didn't have any descript didn't have any noticeable characteristics would be Theodore. <laughs> Didn't they make Theodore like slightly chubbier than the other two in the, in I don't the, know. the live action movies? Why are we talking about this? <laughs> because these writers wrote two of them. <laughs> They're also writing that film Monster Trucks, which is coming out probably soon, I think. It looks terrible. But Yeah, Jennifer, you worked on uh, Dark City. I don't know what that is. It's like some cult classic movie <laughs> that, like I knew about. And I was like, oh, she worked on that. In- interesting, I guess. <laughs> Well, anyway. Yeah, I think that about wraps yeah, that, that up. That wraps that up. Email us at the doctor at decadentvegetable.com. Questions, comments, concerns, angry ants, love letters, your favorite kung fu panda fan fiction. Uh, find us on YouTube, iTunes, and Google Play, all at Triple Play. Be sure to leave a rating if you like the show. Find us on Facebook at Triple Play. I like us on Facebook. I'll check us out on Twitter at 3P Podcast. <laughs> and follow us on Twitter. And uh, as you probably already know at this point, or maybe you don't, or I don't know, but yeah, we're forgoing the um, hints, and we're just going to tell you that we're watching the next X-Men movies, so that'll be real fun. First Claw stays a future post and uh, Apocalypse, in case yeah. you're wondering. So that's coming out in March, March 1st. March Fool's Day, but till then, the end.